I think everybody here knows what confidence is. And I think everybody here also knows what arrogance is. And how do you know if your behavior is confidence or it's turned into arrogance? Because they seem very similar. And the thing in the Quran about this line between these two is that Allah describes a number of people that are extremely arrogant. Starting with Iblis, Istakbara, he demonstrated arrogance. But beyond Istikbar of Iblis, the people who disbelieved in the prophets, one of the common themes among all of them is arrogance. In the Quran, if you want to understand understand the concept of arrogance, there are case studies. The ultimate case study is Fir'aun. And then beyond that, there are some other people, like for example, Qarun comes up quite a bit as a case study for arrogance. But what about confidence? Does the Quran also have stories of confidence? The two good qualities that the Quran celebrates are confidence and humility. Now the problem with those two is they seem like they're opposites. How can you be humble and confident at the same time? Because if you're being confident, that doesn't sound very humble. So I'm going to introduce you to prophets in the Quran that are the example of confidence in the Quran. The top example is going to be Sulaiman alayhi salam. And then you could also add Yusuf alayhi salam. Let's begin with Yusuf alayhi salam. When he came out of prison, he was being called to the king's court. nafsi. I want to put him exclusively under my service. The king was so impressed with this man for interpreting the dreams that he said, I want him to be my exclusive advisor, my personal advisor. When the king says, I'm going to put him exclusively in contact with me, he doesn't say, call him and get my secretary to take his email address down so I can stay in touch. No, 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 no. He's got direct access. This is pretty powerful. And Yusuf alayhi salam very confidently says, no, I ain't coming. What happened with those ladies 20 years ago, 25 years ago? I don't know how many years ago. I want that case to be reopened before I take this job. He's sitting in prison. Somebody sitting in prison is not in a position to negotiate. Even getting out of prison would be amazing. He's not just getting out of prison. He's getting a cabinet position next to the king of Egypt. And he's like, no, mm -mm. I want to clear my name first. Call those ladies. I'm not interested in this job. What kind of confidence is this? Where did that confidence come from? He knows that his knowledge is authoritative. He knows what he's talking about. That's his power. And that power gave him what? Confidence. You need me. I don't need you. You need me. So you're going to fulfill my demands. You're going to call those ladies. We're going to have a trial again. And call the minister while you're at it too. The guy who I used to work for, who got me thrown in jail and then forgot all about me. Let's call him too. So there's a trial. Now after all that trial, his name has been cleared. Alayhi salam. He just came out of jail. Where was he before he was in jail? He was a servant, a slave. And when he's in front of the king, next to the king is his military advisor, his economic advisor, advisor, his policy advisor, these cabinet ministers, they've been doing their job for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you imagine, yeah? And he stands in that room after he's been exonerated and he says, Put me in charge of the treasury, I need to become the treasurer of Egypt. I should be in charge of the entire economy of Egypt. And you're looking at this like, with what resume? He didn't stop there. I am the one that will guard this job and I'm the one who knows what he's doing. What does that sound like? That's confidence. Not only is it confidence, there are people with decades of experience and in their presence he's saying, I'm the one who will take care of this job and I'm the one who knows as if to say, all of these fools don't know what they're doing. If you need to save lives in this country, because people are gonna die if I don't take over the economy right now. That's confidence. And then we get to Suleiman. Anybody familiar with the story of Suleiman alayhi salam? What did he do with this queen? First she tries to give him gifts and he got offended by the gifts. Oh, you're gonna send me gifts? Oh, I'm gonna show you. You think I'm after your throne? No, no, no. I don't need your throne. And if I wanted your throne, I don't gotta go to your throne. I'll bring your throne to me. <laughs> and he brings the throne. The jinn Ifrit brings the throne. She comes there and by the way, the word qila is used. He didn't say, by the way, does that look like her throne? Huh? He's so powerful and he's so confident, he doesn't even bring it up. The ayah says, Qila, it was said. There's multiple ways to think about this. The way I think about this is, imagine that he did this boss move, right? He brought the throne. She's here and all the people who work for Sulaiman was are like, oh, what's gonna happen? But Sulaiman is he going, oh my God, I can't wait to see the look on her face. Nah, 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 he's too cool. Let me just show you around. Not a flinch, not even. So notice anything? No, nothing. But some of the employees, some of the people who work in the court are so excited. The ayah says, Qila, it was said, meaning some other people said, Hey, does that look like your throne? <laughs> and she goes, no who? Oh my God, it's like it's, it's exactly the same. It's almost like it is the throne. And then it dawns on her, what is this? 
How did he, what's going on here? There's another scene of the same story where he's walking on a palace of water. You can imagine there's an aquarium under the glass. So when you walk on the glass, it feels like you're walking on water and there's fish underneath you. And she didn't know that she's about to step into glass. It looks like she's about to step on water. So she lifted her dress just a little. So actually she was being humbled by Suleiman. Just from that walk, she was being humbled by Suleiman alayhi salam. And her throne is sitting right there. So there's multiple power plays in that story, right? But then that sounds a lot like arrogance. That doesn't sound like confidence. Bring her throne. She thinks she's got bling. Let me show her an aquarium with a glass floor. Let me have her lift her dress a little bit so she thinks she's stepping on water. Let me put her in her place. What kind of confidence is this? Here's the thing. Allah gives different people different strengths and different weaknesses. Some people are very strong at controlling their feelings, controlling their tongue. Some people don't have that ability. Some people are physically very strong. You will notice that in the story of Sulaiman, he has a super ability. You know what that is? No matter how much power he has in his hand and how much he shows that power to achieve a certain objective, it's never done for his own ego. He's got this amazing mulk that Allah has given him, right? But it seems like Allah has given him an amazing mulk over his own nafs. Understand that Sulaiman can show off a glass palace, can bring a throne, can humble a queen, but he's got a bigger objective than just boosting his ego. He's actually thinking strategically, I can avoid an entire war with these people, because what's at the top of the house of cards? It's the queen. If the queen can be humbled, the entire nation will be humbled. And the only way to humble people in power is to show them you have more power than them. And so, if she's a queen, let me give her a royal welcome because she speaks that language. And that way, this will be a political boss move that only a strategist of that level can make. And anybody else, maybe even some of the staff looking at her people, the queen's people, ha, show off. Is Sulaiman alayhi salam showing off? No. But some people need a show for strategic reasons. The only place in the Quran you will find a dua that's hard to understand. Rabbi habli mulkan la yanbaghi li ahadim min ba'di. My Rabb, give me power, give me kingdom. Sulaiman asks Allah, give me power, give me kingdom that is not appropriate for anyone to have after I die. Ya Allah, you seem to have given me a control over my nafs that I know ain't nobody gonna have it after me. So Ya Allah, give me more than you've given any other human being so I can use all of it for what? For you, because it doesn't affect me the way it affects other people. Now, you may not be Sulaiman, but maybe Allah has given you immunity to something. Maybe Allah has given you some ability to do something without needing to take the credit for it. But you're good at it, and you don't use it to further your own ego. But you want to accomplish big things, because it's bigger than yourself. But projecting it, demonstrating it, showing it, making it bigger, doing the, the branding of it. Isn't it branding the glass floor? Isn't that branding? Isn't that advertising? You know, maybe sometimes the advertising, the strategy, the marketing of it, the positioning of it, the bling of it is part of a much bigger objective that has nothing to do with your own personal ego. It's absolutely incredible. That's the height of confidence. When you can have so much wealth and so much power and so much to show the world and none of it affects you because you're working on something bigger than yourself. It seems like we think confidence is a bad thing. It's not. Arrogance is a bad thing. Confidence is a necessity. You can't accomplish anything in life without confidence. You need it. May Allah Azza wa Jalla help us to become and to raise confident generations of Muslims that can bring the glory of this deen to the entire world.